I have been asked to introduce Frank McGuire to you. Under normal circumstances, I might have been able to turn that request down, but the one doing the asking was McGuire. I have a particular role this morning, and it's not inconsistent with my remarks about Edson. Edson has taken a $3 million company and made it into a $1.5 billion company. I am the warm-up act for the next speaker, Frank McGuire, who took not a zero-dollar company, but a company that owed people a lot of money and was the co-founder, of course, with arguably the most innovative corporation in the United States of America, namely Federal Express. And he's been there, and I just talk about it. I'm telling you, you're the greatest. Fantastic group of people. You're making me feel like I'm home, folks. Going back to just a few, maybe 30 some odd years, when I met a young Marine, coming back from Vietnam, couldn't find a job. I had just gotten fired from Kentucky Fried Chicken, where I used to be the head of marketing. And this guy calls me on the telephone. He says, are you the Frank McGuire just got fired? I said, yeah, thanks for calling. Who's this? He says, my name is Fred Smith. And I'm thinking about starting up a little company down here in Memphis. So uh, you want to come down? I want to talk to you about it. So you're out of work? You go anywhere, right? I mean, heck, some people go to Memphis for Lent. But I get down there, and I meet this young man. He's 30 years old. And he's sitting there drawing on a napkin. The continental United States puts a big dot where Memphis is, and he's drawing out the spokes, the hub and the spoke concept. I said, Fred, let me see if I got this right. He said, why, why? Does he want to bring little packages? I mean, 50 pounds or less in the middle of the night to Memphis? He said, yeah, that's right. And then you want to shuffle them up and get them out before dawn? He says, yeah, that's right. Fred, that's the dumbest idea I've ever heard in my life. He looks at me, he says, any dumber than selling chicken in the cardboard box? <laughs> I guess not. He said, McGuire, why don't you get smart? I said, what do you mean get smart? He said, I just got back from Vietnam, I can't find a job. You obviously can't hold a job. <laughs> So a guy who couldn't find a job and a guy who couldn't hold a job got together in Memphis, Tennessee with a small group of other people in 1973 and created a brand which has recognized the globe over as a, as a verb, as a signature for quality. Now what I love to hear tonight as I've heard this from the new members of the family with this great, fantastic, fantastic brand name on the side of your vehicles. It wasn't the vehicles. It wasn't the technology. It was the people. So now let's talk about what it is that creates a successful organization. I call them the McGuire absolutes. Now listen to me. There's only three of them. And they are universal. They are immutable. If you just listen to me as an executive at FedEx Freight, as an employee on your first assignment, as a member of the senior management team, just make note in your heart of these three McGuire absolutes. What is it that makes a company great? Has nothing to do with the trucks or the money. It has everything to do with these three universal cultural elements. And here's what they are. Number one, feelings. I love what I do because these are the principles that I have seen work and they're successful. I had a friend of mine uh, who told me uh, the importance of telling stories. I mean, telling, you know, I love to tell stories. I got a whole bunch of them. Who ever heard of an Irishman from New York who didn't tell a story, right? 
For example, he'd tell the story about the rabbi who was walking through the, the village and he saw this garden, the most important, beautiful garden he had ever seen. And in the garden was the woman whose garden it was. And the rabbi bowed and said to her, my dear, my dear Rachel, what a beautiful garden you and God have. To which the woman responded, well, thanks, rabbi. You should have seen it when God had it all to himself. <laughs> now, what's the message I'm trying to get across? This is your garden. PPAI, this is your garden, your company. It's time for you to wrap. Take care of it. All right. So before I leave you with a poem that my friend Osgood wrote, it summarizes everything that I have to say. And it goes like this. You know, some people think the best policy is never to expect very much out of life. If you don't expect very much, their reasoning goes, you'll never be disappointed. Now, it's people who act this way. I like to lower the expectations of young people. If young people expect too much, their reasoning goes, the rest of their life is going to be one big letdown. Now, that's a crazy way to look at things. To me, the problem with setting your sights too high is far outweighed by the chance of underachievement that comes from setting your sights too low. Now, what keeps us from realizing our full potential, you wonderful people, is our own underestimation of what our full potential is. We're too ready to accept other people's discouraging comments about how far we can go or how high we can fly. The worst thing you can tell anybody of any age is that they may as well give up pursuing any given goal because for one reason or another, they'll never make it anyway. Now, I talked to Osgood about this and we one day got together and we wrote a poem that summarizes everything I've talked to you about today. And it's my way of saying farewell, my friends. Listen to the message of the poem about a bird who never knew who he was. And it goes like this. A man once found an eagle's egg and put it in the nest of a barnyard hen. The eagle hatched and grew up with the rest of a brood of chicks, thought he didn't look at all the same. He scratched the ground for worms and bugs and he played a chicken's game. The eagle clucked and cackled. He made a chicken sound. He flopped his wings, but he only flew some two feet off the ground. Now that's high. As chickens fly, the eagle had been told. And one day, when the eagle was quite old, he saw something magnificent, flying very high, making great majestic circles up there in the sky. He'd never seen the likes of it. What's that, he asked in awe, as he stared in wonder and amazement at the grace and the beauty that he saw. Well, that's an eagle, someone said. He belongs up there, it's clear. Just as we, since we are chickens, belong earthbound down here. The old eagle just accepted that. Most everybody does. And he lived and died a chicken because that's what he thought he was. My dear friends, your greatest responsibility as leaders in your corporation, as leaders in your industry, is to stay in touch, never lose touch with the fact that you are an eagle, every one of you. And I want you to take this message back with you to your offices and your factories, and I want you to convey this message to every single person in your life. Your kids, your employees, your mates, your friends, perfect strangers, to remind them that they are eagles. Because PPAI, we have many great circles remaining to be made. We have high to fly and far to go. And so from Francis, from my associate Rachel, from those of us in our company, may I say to you, each and every one of you, never forget You're the greatest. 
Thank you so much. Thank you.